My name is David Reif. I was professor of art at the University of Wyoming for 35 years and uh, uh, had many students that were struggling with the same questions of abstract art that no but non-objective abstract art is struggling with. What is non-objective abstract art? That's the question that this um, exhibition asks and I think it's an important um, historical question that goes back to the early 20th century when artists were confronted with new ideas about nature, about human perception, about the idea of an object as a work of art, and they raised serious questions that challenged the conventions of 19th century art, which is that art should perhaps be an experience rather than represent things that we experience in the world. What these works do uh, do, and the idea of abstract art does, it, it puts a larger frame around art and says that traditional portraiture and landscape and all the conventional notions of art are still valid, but they fit within the larger scheme of ideas, the history of ideas in, that explore what perception is and what art can and should be in a larger sense that goes beyond just representation. That's important for every artist to understand, not because one is right and one is wrong, one is progressive or one is not, but because they want, the artists should be making a conscious choice about what they want to target as the conceptual framework for their own art uh, expression. It does redefine how we think about those, and I hope everyone will take a lesson from that about how it redefines what portraiture can be or what landscape can be. But it doesn't nullify it, it doesn't uh, negate it or delegitimize it. Those things are still present in our human experience too and deserve artistic attention. But it does reconstruct how we think about them. I favored uh, work that explored beyond just the conventions of abstract, non-objective art and the tradition intellectually of, of non-objective abstract art. And I looked for things that seem to build upon or add something new or different to the whole issue of non-objective abstract art. This paint, this collage, assemblage or a collage by Lily and Frank is called the um, Polarity, uh, is um, interesting to me because it seems to embody the nature of our thinking in our current socio-political environment, as well as the nature of the bipolar nature of the way the mind itself works. This one is a little bit gritty and it is challenging to the viewer because it's not about making something pretty, it's about making something that reveals a truth in how we think or how we feel or how we respond to the world around us. It of course looks like a sphere, it could be a world, a globe, or it could be the human brain with two bicameral kinds of parts to it. You'll notice the collage is made up of words and pieces cut out, which is perhaps how our minds work. We take pieces of things and try to make sense of it, but in the process we often lose the fact that we only have pieces, we don't have the whole. This piece works very nicely in expressing those kinds or evoking those kinds of ideas. The second honorable mention is this work by Jut Sotabayer. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A very thought-provoking title on this piece, Wise to Seen the Breaker of Rings, If He Would Eat the Gleaming Heart. That's very thought-provoking and very poetic. I'm not going to try to interpret it, but it's interesting to think about a visual experience in relationship to what the title that the artist puts in. It's a very rich piece. I love the fact that it didn't have any single 
topical subject matter, but seems to be part of a larger texture or landscape, something vast and yet something intimate, like tree bark or like mountain ranges and so forth. Really a beautiful piece, but also kind of disturbing and kind of unsettling and yet beautiful and thought-provoking in the same way. This is the bronze, the third award uh, that we're giving out, and it goes to Todd Brugman, uh, an artist for Central Massachusetts. Very interesting and soft, rich piece that has a lot of feeling and continuity of purpose in it and expression. It's called Automatic Gravity, another thought-provoking title. I like the way his composition works, the way it creates atmosphere, the way it opens up a world of thought about what this means and what, what it's uh, portraying, um, or what it is as an experience for us. So I thought this was very strong, and you'll notice his other work um, is, has a continuity of purpose as well. So it's not that he's doing just one thing. There is a consciousness that's guiding the style and the work and the choices he's making as an artist. Second choice uh, for an award, it's called Deconstruction Number 71 by Sergio Nates. And I thought it was very interesting in that it appears to be a complete portrait of fragmentation, of things falling apart, of us not knowing where something came from and what it's going to become. Uh, he has two pieces in the exhibition. This, is, this one I thought was particularly um, strong and thought-provoking, and it also uh, conforms to some of the ideas that I stated and put into the artist statement. This is the top award, the gold award. First place goes to Bonnie Libish. Uh, and the title of this piece is Variation A15. I like the title because it's non objective itself. And it's interesting in that it is, uses conventional materials from painting, stitching, canvas, fabric, pieces of things. And again, fragmentation and pieces describes the way we experience the world around us. Uh, and she captures that as though this could be many paintings, many pieces of art, or just one, but they are always fragmentary, just like our real experience is fragmentary. And I thought she captured the whole idea of how the question of what constitutes the boundary of a work of art is always in question. And that is a question that is repeated again and again in much of abstract, non-objective art. So this piece was particularly strong, and I could talk for a long time about each of these pieces, but I chose this one because it seemed ambitious, it seemed to, to embody the questions that abstract art asks the viewer to think about. And this is a good example of that. 